Welcome to tonight's wellness workshop. I am very excited because it has been about two years since we did one of these. Um, we used to do these on a weekly basis. The goal is to educate our community, educate our patients um, about various health and wellness topics. It's one of my favorite things to do in the world is to educate and inspire people to be their best. So the fact that I'm able to bring these back, the pandemic kind of took people away from being around each other. But now uh, it's a little bit easier to be around each other, so I'm happy that we're able to bring this back into the office. I'm excited to be able to share this information tonight with you because um, some of the information that you're going to hear tonight is things that you is obvious, and then there's a little blip of it that a lot of people don't think about, and that's why I'm kind of doing this to open your eyes to something new that you may not have heard before. So today's topic is obviously called the vital needs of life. So the biggest question is when you hear the word vital need, what does a vital need sound like to you? What is a vital need? It's, it's essential. So something that's going to keep us alive. So if you think about what are some vital needs, let's just start throwing out. I like participation, by the way, when I talk. So, um, so things that you think, so we got food, we got water. Who else? What else? Oxygen. Awesome. Money. Do you need money to survive? Literally, can you live without money? <laughs> you, you can live without money. It's not life or death. It's more difficult without money, but you can live without money. So a vital need is something that we need in order to survive. If we don't have it, we will no longer be living. So unfortunately, as much as we like money, it's not something we need to survive. But you are absolutely correct with food. You're absolutely correct with oxygen. You're absolutely correct with... Um, I heard somebody say water, and then there's another one we're going to talk about in a moment. So if we think about it, let's categorize the importance of it. So this triangle or this pyramid is our categorization of what's the most important thing. So up top here is the most important. Down here is the least of the four important things. They're all important, but this one is the lowest. Obviously, you've seen a pyramid before. You know that it goes from most important to least important. So then nourishment is food, right? So of all of those four things, food is important, but the least important of all of them. So if we think about that, how long do you think you could survive without food? Two weeks. Okay. Anybody else? A month. Okay, good. Let's, let's, let's say, would, do you think you can go hours without food? Yes. Can you go days without food? Yes. Can you go weeks without food? Up to two weeks. Can you go months without food? No. Okay, we're going to find out the answer in a moment. Water is the next important thing, because it's more important than food, right? You could go without food for a certain period of time, but when you take out water, that's a little bit of a harder thing to survive without, correct? Yeah. So can you go days without, or, or hours or, or minutes without water? Yeah. Can you go days? Yeah. Can you go weeks? No. No. Can you go months? No. Okay, we'll find out in a moment. Oxygen, again, more important than water and nourishment, but important for overall health and wellness needs. Oxygen, can you go minutes without it? Yeah. Actually, can you go seconds without it? Yes. Can you go minutes? Mm, can you go days? No. Can you go weeks? No. Can you go months? No. no. I think you go eight minutes without oxygen. Exactly. So then everybody in, in, in the health and wellness world, or even just living in life, we think about these three. Food, water, and oxygen. What's another one even more important that if you didn't have it full, uh, like if you took it away instantly, you would not survive? And this is the trick question. This is the one that everybody forgets about. Well, let's think. I'm a chiropractor. You are here in a chiropractic office. What is one thing that we work on in the chiropractic office? Your nervous system. Awesome. So what is the nervous system makeup? It's your brain your spinal cord, and all of the spinal nerves that control our body. So if I was to sever a spinal cord, 
what happens? You're done. So nerve flow, the flow from the brain to the body, is more important than all other vital needs. If we were to get rid of that, we would no longer survive. So that is the fourth, oops, sorry, I went the wrong one. The fourth vital need. So now let's go back to our question. Food. You said how long? Up to two weeks. You can actually go up to two months without food. As long as you have water, as long as you have oxygen, and as long as you don't have a severed spinal cord, which nobody's walking around with a severed spinal cord, which is great, but good nerve flow. So we can go months without food. How about water? What do we say well, for water? Can we go months, weeks, days? What do you think? We can go up to three days. Awesome. So obviously more important that we keep hydrated versus always caring about food, although both are important. Now, do you think we live in a world that is chronically dehydrated? 100%, yes. Absolutely. So do you want to know the magic formula? I say this in every one of my talks when we talk about hydration. How do you know or how do you know how much water you're supposed to have per day? Correct. So half of your body weight in ounces of water per day. And that body weight is in pounds. So if you weigh 100 pounds, you need 50 ounces of water a day. If you weigh 200 pounds, you need 100 ounces of water a day. So if you think about that in bottles of water, your typical Poland Spring or whatever bottle of water is 16.9 ounces, right? Like as long as you're getting that normal, and obviously they have the 24 ounces, but 16.9. So how many do you need if you need 100 ounces of water? Come on, math, math whizzes. I'm not a math whiz, so I'm not going to try to do it. Well, let's say if it was 20, which is close, you need five. So you probably need anywhere from five to six bottles of water a day if you weigh 200 pounds. Most people are not doing that. So we live in a world that is chronically dehydrated in addition to a world that is chronically not nourished with the most well-rounded um, diets. So that's why we unfortunately live in a world that is the sickest that it's ever been. You know, we live in a world where, I don't like to get grim in statistics, but we live in a world where there's more parents outliving their children nowadays than ever in their life. And it's a sad, sad statistic. In fact, I just found out this week that one of my wife's neighbors who they grew up with he was 36 years old, just passed away. Second child that passed away. So the parents lost both children well under 30 something years old. So, and it's unfortunate, you know, we don't know what the reasoning was. There's all theories out there and we'll find out they're going to do a checkup. But um, yeah, we live in an unhealthy world, which is why I like to do these talks, which is why I like to put this information out there. Whoever's seeing it, whether there's five people in a room or 50 people in a room, if I could plant a seed in one person's brain and they could tell somebody else, then, I, then we did our job. So water, up to three days. Oxygen, what do we say for oxygen? Eight minutes. You're saying eight minutes. Up to six minutes, you're close. Oh. So minutes. So we can go months without food as long as we have the other vital needs. We can go days without water as long as we have the other needs. Oxygen, minutes. And then nerve flow is the other one. It's instantaneous. Who remembers the story of um, Superman, right? Well, there's been a lot of Supermans. What was his name? Reeves? Christopher, Christopher Reeves. Reeves. Been a lot of Supermans since then, probably. So Christopher Reeves had an accident where he fell off a horse and he severed his spinal cord right at the C2, I believe it was. And what happened? He was paralyzed from his waist down. Um, he lived, which is great because everything above it was working, but unfortunately the rest of his body was not healthy. So that's the importance of nerve flow. Now, now we're not walking around, like I said earlier, with um, severed spinal cords, but we do have stress on our nerves due to abnormal posture, which is why we as chiropractors are so adamant about people taking care of their spine, not only because they have pain, but because they want to function at their best. Because you're, there's a direct relationship between your spinal structure and your overall function of your body. 
and ask people that have horrible posture how they feel, especially older age. You know, when you see those old, you know, older women and older men, they're walking around with their cane like this. Do you think they're healthy? Unfortunately, not. There's a direct relationship between your structure and your function. And that's why chiropractors are so adamant about looking at the spine, looking at your posture, etc. But it's because of this vital need of nerve flow that everybody forgets about. Nobody's walking around every day saying, oh, who's your chiropractor? Who's your chiropractor? Who's your chiropractor? They're asking for who's your dentist? You know, who's your orthopedic? Who's your medical doctor? Who's your pediatrician? But they're not walking around saying, who's your chiropractor? When the chiropractor is one of the most important people to see because they are keeping you well. The other ones are just managing your current condition. So chiropractors, in my opinion, I'm biased because I'm a chiropractor, should be the first person that you see in your situation that you're in. Um, and then they could say, well, this is something that chiropractic can help, or this is something that chiropractic wouldn't help, and I could send you to the right person that would. We have a flipped system. We have a system that goes to medical doctors, orthopedics first, and then they think about like chiropractors and oh, more holistic things last. And they look at us as the, you know, the holistic, you know, weirdos, some people think us as, where we're the ones that are trying to teach about health and wellness. I mean, are there orthopedics walking around doing these talks? No, it's usually uh, chiropractors are more holistic minded doctors that are willing to stand up and do these educational classes because we understand that in order for you to be he healthy and well for the rest of your life, you need to do, make diligent actions on a daily basis to get there. You can't just sit around and wait for your body to break down and then take care of yourself. You need to take care of yourself on a daily basis. And that's where conversations like food, what food to put in your body is important, hydration, chiropractic, uh, acupuncture, massage, uh, exercise, all of those things should be in a health and wellness plan, which in our next topic next week or in two weeks, we're going to talk about the wellness lifestyle. What does it mean to be well? You know, what does that journey look like? It's more than just getting adjusted by a chiropractor. It's more than just eating well. It's more than just making sure that you um, have enough water throughout your, throughout your life. It's really important to have a well-balanced plan in order to stay well and be well, or you're never going to get that level. So, like I said a moment ago, we're really comfortable about talking about food talking about water, talking about oxygen, but how many people are confident enough to walk around and say that, you know, they're going to a chiropractor, it's helped them, it's important that they're important people in their life get checked by chiropractors because it's more about how you feel, it's more about how you function. So if I walked around the streets and just had everybody come in here, most people would walk around with abnormal posture. You know, they might not be walking around with chronic pain and unfortunately people have equated uh, symptoms with health, when in fact symptoms is just a representation of how you're feeling at the moment, but a representation of health is really about how, you, how well you're functioning. Well, how do you know you're functioning well? What are some things you can do to find out if you're functioning well, not just feeling well? What's a way to find out if you're functioning well? You could do a stress test that would check your cardiovascular function. <laughs> if you want to do that, that's a crazy way of doing it. But how about just getting back to the basic, just the, the understanding of the, of the body? Can you check your blood pressure? That'll tell you if you're functioning well. If you have high blood pressure, your cardiovascular system is not working very well or functioning very well. You could check your heart rate. If you have a high resting heart rate, you're not functioning at your best. You could check your blood panel and check your glucose levels. If your glucose levels are teetering towards high or at the diabetic level, you know that you're not functioning well. You can um, do, um, what's another test we could do? A fat content, you know, for exercise reasons, for p finding out if you're obese. You know, they like to use, um, to find out if you're obese, quote unquote, they like to use the, oh my God, what's the, BMI. Yes, the BMI. Thank you. I literally skipped my brain the second I thought about it. Um, the BMI. The BMI is your is your um, your weight divided by your height, or vice versa, which is going to give you a certain number. It's the worst thing to use because it doesn't take in consideration muscle mass. Like, believe it or not, in the BMI world, I walk around as obese, but it's because I have muscle. 
So they don't take in consideration that. So the best way to know if you're obese is to get a fat content or a caliper test to find out how much fat you have. So that's a way to find out if you're functioning well. Um, obviously, cardiovascularly, if you're, if you're uh, taking a step up, walking up the stairs, or you're taking a little jog up the stairs, and at the end of it, you're like barely able to breathe, probably telling you you're not functioning at your best. So this is really what you want to think about when it comes to health and wellness is function, not feeling. Because you could feel perfectly fine, and my, my wife's friend was a perfect example. He was perfectly fine, and then he wasn't. So something was going on in the body that nobody knew about, and it took his life, unfortunately. So feeling is less about function than function. So in the health and wellness world, we are all about function. And as a chiropractor that works on structure, we are big on understanding how is your structure affecting your function. But we also might talk about what are you putting in your body? Because a well-balanced diet is also important. How much are you drinking? You got to make sure you're getting a good enough hydration. Um, are you doing some cardiovascular exercise? Are you moving around? Are you using those lungs and that cardiovascular system? Because that's going to get you to make sure that your blood flow is getting to the rest of your body. So this is how you really think about your health and wellness. And it's not just about, I'm walking around and I feel okay. Because it's unfortunately not the best way to go about it. So think, I, like it, I like that it's both Fs. So it's not about feeling, it's about function. Think about the function F, not the feeling F. Um, so we live in a world where people are obsessed with not dealing with life as if everything is okay. When in fact, a lot of people are walking around not functioning at their best. So to be logical, the conclusive reason to mobilize people to get checked, and I'm not just saying for chiropractic, just overall. And, and the biggest, what is the biggest demographic of people that do not check their overall health and wellness? Men between the age of 25 and Probably 50. I don't know about the age, but I will definitely say men. So if there are men in your life, it would be very smart to talk to them about just getting checked, whether it's at us as a chiropractor, which I'm a huge fan of. Come get checked. Come see if your posture is okay. Come get x-rays. Come find out if you have the right structure so that you can have the right function. But also have them go to their medical doctor to get just a basic checkup because there's a lot of people walking around, especially men, that think they're okay because they feel okay, or they want to have that macho mentality of, oh, I'm fine. I don't need a doctor. And unfortunately, I'm pretty convinced that's why women outlive men. Let me ask you a question on sure. going back to BMI. Sure. How would you feel if you are obese mm -hmm. and you go to a medical doctor and he tells you, your BMI wouldn't be so bad if you were in fact. Well, yeah, because it's literally the relationship between your height and your weight. So shorter people that are heavier are going to be higher in BMI. Taller people that are skinnier are going to have a smaller BMI. People that are medium size, like myself, that has a broader spectrum or broader size, I'm going to be higher on the BMI. So that's why that is not even the best way to go about it. Now, obviously, if you are obese, you're going to know it. You know, people walk around, they know if they're, if they're overweight and fat. So it's not, I'm not saying don't listen to the BMI. But if you really want to get the true number, you go get a, 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 a fat content evaluation, whether you do, there's, you could do a caliper test with a pinch thing. You can do the, the basic one where you just hold your arms out and they do it based on sens sensations or, or uh, blood flow in the fingers. Um, you could do water uh, weighing. So there's different ways, but that's the way to really find out. But, but if you know you're overweight, you don't need that number. But there's people like myself who walks around. I'm not obese, but they but the BMI says that I am. But if you did my fat content, I might be like over uh, the average. You know, maybe the average for my my height and weight is, I don't know, 18 percent, and maybe I'm at 20 percent. But if the normal for my size is 18 percent, and I come up at 35 percent, well, then I have a problem, and that's something you want to work on. So yeah, it's just it's the BMI is a relationship between height and weight. So there's too many variables that could cause that, that it's not the best way to go about it. Not that tonight is all about weight, but it's a part of health and wellness. Yeah. Oh, no, that's why I'm here. Um, so what does it mean to get checked here at our office? Because I said you could go to medical doctors, you could get to other um, professionals to get checked. But in our office, what it looks like is we start off with posture evaluation. Your posture is a direct window to your spine. So we always start with a posture evaluation. Obviously, 
Some of you in this office are patients, so you've already been through this. But if there's anybody else that's watching this that wanted to learn more, what does it look like in our office to get checked? Posture evaluation. If you're looking at somebody's posture from the front, common sense is it should be straight, right? We shouldn't see walking around like this. If you have somebody turn from the side, the ears should be over the shoulders, the shoulders should be over the hips, knees, and ankles. So this posture is better than this posture. So posture evaluation is number one, x-rays is number two, and a functional evaluation. We check heart rate, we check blood pressure, we check bilateral weight scales to see if we, we um, balance our weight evenly from side to side. We check range of motion, we check a health history. So getting checked in our office is pretty comprehensive. Maybe some other offices are not, but that's what it takes to get checked here. Um, I would love to just put a thing out there that, think about the men in your life right now. We talked about it before. Get them to get checked first. Once they get checked, then it's a direct, relation, a direct impact on somebody else's life, and maybe they can get other people uh, going as well. So, um, but yes, that's a great demographic to look at. You know, kids, everybody forgets about the kids because the kids are walking around vibrant as can be, right? So they're not walking around with pain unless they have some accident or injury. So, but kids benefit so well from chiropractic because um, you want to make sure they develop with the strongest spine and nervous system. I always say that adults with bad posture were kids that had bad posture that got ignored because it develops over time. So if you have a child, whether they're a young child or a adolescent, that's a good time for them to start versus waiting till they're 20, 30, 40 years old, then they get their symptoms or their problems, and then it's hard to fix. I mean, I've been adjusting my children. I have a three-year-old and a five-month-old. I've been adjusting both of them since they've been days old. Now, obviously, a child adjustment is very different than an adult adjustment. We actually did a video last week or two weeks ago about it. It was pretty cool to see. Um, but that's when it starts because you can make sure that their spine and nervous system is functioning at their best so that they can develop at their best. Um, so that's a good demographic to think about. Men in your lives, children, but, and I'm not doing this for us. There's people out there that might not be in this area, but they might need a chiropractor. So if you want to find a chiropractor that might be good for you, we'll, we'll try to help find one, but not everybody's going to be able to come here because there's people outside this area. So this is a talk really not just for our office, but for all of chiropractic and all of health and wellness and how to be the strongest that they can be. Um, so yeah, so that's it with the slides. So any questions about what we went over? I did the most perfect talk that nobody has a question, not even a thought. What's the first thing that came to your mind when you said, when I said, think about people in your life, who's the per first person you thought of? You have a dad. Yes, I know. We've talked about it. We've talked about it. And look, a man, her dad's suffering, and he needs to get in here. But yes, but, it, but even if there's somebody that you know that's living in California, you know, talk to them. Say, hey, I, I heard a talk from this chiropractor. Um, he may realize the importance of the spine. Why don't you go get checked? The best thing that they could say is, sure, let me find a chiropractor. The worst thing is, nah, I'm good. But at least you planted that seed so that when they do need it, it's going to be in there and they're going to think about it. Excellent. Who'd you think about? My daughter. Yes. A child. That wasn't even planned. That's great. <laughs> um, yes. So an adult, a child, great people to work on. Obviously, everyone is good to work on. But there's certain demographics that just are being ignored the most. So, um, yeah. So I'm excited to wrap up this talk today. I know it's a short one, but it's okay. We're going to try to make these short, 20 to 20, 25, 30 minutes at most, because people have lives. And I know you don't want to sit here for, you know, an hour and a half, two hours to sit and learn about anything. Um, but yes, yeah, so what are the vital needs? Let's go over them. What's water? water. Well, let's go order uh, lowest to highest or lowest. So we got nourishment or food. Water. Water. Oxygen. Oxygen. Nervous system flow. Yes. Think about it. Absorb it. Understand it. Because that is an easy way to just set a foundation of how to become healthy. You want to just start becoming healthier or just think about ways to, well, I'm so unhealthy. I don't know where to start. Start with that. You know, if you, if you want to start with the easier, easiest one is food. And that's the easiest one. Just think about what you have on a daily basis. Obviously, I'm one that's going to say start with chiropractic because it's the most important. But that might be a big step for somebody. Start with the things that are easier to handle. Food and water, very easy to handle. And oxygen. 
We do breathing exercises. We were just talking to a patient before that there's something called box breathing that I think the Marines do. Was she, was she doing? The Marines were doing it? Uh, the, Navy. the Navy or one of them. Um, that just to kind of calm yourself and calm your brain. It's, so you breathe in for four seconds. Then you breathe out for four seconds. Then you breathe in for four seconds. Breathe out for four seconds. Just to calm your brain. Get the blood flow. Get the oxygen in there because uh, we need that to survive the best that we could. Um, water. I mean, you can easily increase the water. You know, if you're currently having two bottles of water a day, make it three. <laughs> you know, you don't have to jump right into the 50%, but that's a good, that's a good framework of where to start. But to add to that, that's 50% at the minimum. If you are having, um, beverages that are dehydrating you, not anymore. So if you're having a lot of soda, you're having a lot of sugar, you're having a lot of alcohol throughout the day that is dehydrating you, you're going to need more. At the baseline, it's half your body weight in water. So, yes. And then, yeah, chiropractic. That's my life. That's what we do all day long. That's what I always recommend. So I appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. If there are no more questions, we will wrap this up. And we will be in two weeks. We'll talk about the wellness journey. Um, we're going to bring in a little bit more of this, what we already talked about and just build on it, on what steps you can do to become well. Excellent. Thank you so much. See you guys.